Welcome to Money Matters with Karen Ford, where you will learn methods and manners for increase to help you move from financial bondage to financial freedom. Hello, I'm Karen Ford and welcome to Money Matters. Today I want to speak with you about breaking through. Whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in your home, whether it's in finances, God wants to break us through into another area of passion, another area of His presence, another area of finances. Now 2021 was a very interesting year. I lost my mother in 2021. My brother uh, suffered an anaphylactic shock to a medication that was given to him, but God broke through. Why? Because when something happens in a nation, it's because there's been a breakthrough in a city. When something happens in a city, it's because there's been a breakthrough in a region. When there is something happening in a region, it's because there's been a breakthrough in a people. And when there when there's something happening in a people, it's because there's been a breakthrough in a person, in an individual. Individual, and we cannot underestimate the power of a personal breakthrough. Karen, what does this have to do with money? It has everything to do with money because we're talking about breakthrough, but this is not only applicable to every area of our life, but also with money. So I want to begin with 2 Samuel 5, verses 17 through 25, and I'm not going to read the entire passage. You can read that on your own, but I'm going to paraphrase some of it. Now, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek out David. And when David heard about it, he went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines came to a place called Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? And the Lord said, go up, I will certainly hand them over. Dropping down, it says that the Philistines abandoned their idols there. So David and his men carried them away. Now the New King James Version says that the idols were burned. How many of us know that we need to burn the idols? We don't save them up, we don't store them, we need to burn them. Now the Philistines came up once and again over ran the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord again. And he said, how do you want me to do this? But this time the Lord said, you shall not go directly up, circle around behind them and come at them in front of the mulberry trees. And when you hear the sound of the marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, you shall act promptly. And David did so just as the Lord had commanded him and he struck and killed the Philistines from Geba as far as Gazar. Say, Lord of the breakthroughs. Bel Perizim means breakthroughs. Now, we need to do a little history lesson here. When Boaz and Ruth, reading Ruth chapter 4, we discover that Boaz and Ruth got married and they stood in the gates of the city. And the elders of the city raised their hands over them and pronounced a blessing over them. And the blessing of the house of Perez was spoken over them. Now, why is this important? Because Perez broke through. Even in the womb of his mother, Tamar, Zerub was moved back and Perez became the possessor of the birthright and the blessing of the firstborn is what he received. Perez broke through, get that. Perez broke through, he received the blessing of the firstborn. God told Ruth and took Ruth and Boaz and the blessing of the house of Perez was pronounced over them. But when you read the last chapter of Ruth, it speaks of the genealogy of David, but it begins with Perez. It doesn't go back any farther than that. Why does it begin with Perez? Because God is trying to tell us David's line had a breakthrough and it was through Perez. Now, and it, here's the other thing. We can't underestimate the power of a personal breakthrough because we never know generationally where that breakthrough is coming down and who it's going to affect. Because the enemy wants us to believe that if you have 
uh, if you fail in something, if you fail in the area of finances, that you're now a failure. And that's, that's a lie from the devil. The devil also wants us to believe that we underestimate the power of a victory and that when we have a victory, it's not that big of a deal. But the opposite is true. When we, have a fa when we fail, that does not make us a failure. That does not make us a failure. And when we have a breakthrough, we need to shout and to praise God because he has caused us to break through. He is the one that has caused us to have a breakthrough. God isn't just speaking promises over Abraham for Abraham's sake. No, he's a generational God. God is pronouncing blessings over Abraham because it's going to come down to Isaac. God is pronouncing blessings over Isaac so it comes down to Jacob. God is pronouncing blessings over Jacob for the 12 tribes. Listen, God is pronouncing blessings over you, not just for your sake, but he's a generational God. And it's, so it's going to bless your children and your children's children and your children's children's children, because we serve a generational God. See, when God blesses you and your finances, it's not just for your sake. It's so that your children are going to be blessed and your children's children are going to be blessed. And, you know, some of you may be watching right now and say, my kids' finances are a mess. My my finances are a mess, but God is saying to you today, I want to break you through in the area of finances and you need to begin saying, I have a blessed line. I serve a generational God. My kids are blessed. My children's children are blessed. My house is blessed. My people are a people of breakthrough. No longer am I going to perpetuate darkness. No longer am I going to perpetuate traditions that bring about bondage. No longer am I going to perpetuate a can't do attitude? No longer am I going to perpetuate and allow a spirit of poverty to rule and reign in my life because I serve a living, powerful, blessing God in Jesus name. So what God started in Perez didn't end in Perez because we serve a generational God. John 10.10 10 says, The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And that's not just for you, but your children and your children's children. And God is going to cause a breakthrough to come into your life today because breakthrough begats breakthrough. And if you ever get the revelation that the devil is under your feet, it's a culture of breakthrough. Say it's a culture of breakthrough. It starts a cycle that the enemy cannot stop. Have you ever been around somebody that it just seems like they just swim in the area of breakthrough? It's not that they ever, never go through anything. It's not that they never have a financial problem or a predicament, but you and I would never know about it because they just seem to break through. They just seem to walk in victory after victory after victory. But that's where God wants all of us to be. Victory after victory after victory. But that's why you're going through what you're going through today. You're a pioneer of breakthrough in your own home. Today, we are driving on roads that generations before, they had to remove trees, they had to remove rocks, they had to plow, they had to pave, they had to pour concrete. And today, we're driving on highways that generations ago, they created. Somebody else pioneered and made roadways for us to drive on today. So if you're going through some stuff today, you're a pioneer today so that others can enjoy the fruits of your labor. You're pressing through. You're going through. The enemy wants you to believe that the spirit of poverty is on your life. It's been on your life and it's always going to be on your life. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. No, if you start that business, God wants you to excel in that business. If, if you have begun to invest, it's not going to fail. God's going to help you and show you where to invest, how to invest, how much to invest, when to invest, because God wants to break you through in the area of finances. And God did something through the life of Perez that created a culture of breakthroughs for future generations. 
We serve a big God. We don't serve a little God. God wants us to break through an area of every area of our life. And Jesus didn't come to teach us how to cope. He came to teach us how to conquer. I'm tired of churches teaching people, well, this is how you cope with this, or this is how you cope with that. Thank God I'm in a church. They don't teach us to cope. They teach us, hey, we're more than conquerors. <laughs> That's what the word of God says. We're to conquer in every area of our lives. So if you're going through hell today, if you're having difficulty in your finances today, it's going to, God's going to cause you to break through because in Psalm 84, it says, when you come through a valley, there is another dimension of strength that is released upon your life. And God isn't going to waste your pain. God, your pain is productive and has a purpose because whenever you walk through a fire and you're going to come out on the other side, there's going to be a promotion. I heard one great preacher say, new level, new devil. If you're already on a new level, know that there's going to be a new devil, a new area uh, <laughs> that is going to begin bombarding you. But know this, that we serve a great God and he's going to give you the strategy to overcome your enemy in Jesus name. Perez had a breakthrough. Perez had a son. Perez's son had a son all the way down to a guy named Boaz and Boaz who came through the house of Perez. Po, uh, Boaz had a son named Obed. Obed had a son named Jesse and Jesse had a son named David. And David is from the house of breakthrough. But David is getting ready to gain his personal revelation of a breakthrough. This is what I know. David could have said, hey, you know what? I'm from the house of breakthrough. I don't need to break through myself because I'm from the line of breakthrough. I don't need my own personal breakthrough. But see, God loves David too much to allow him to think because you're in the house of breakthrough, uh, Perez, you're going to have your own, you're going to run on his, coattail, so to speak, and have a breakthrough. But see, God loves him too much. We have to have a personal breakthrough. You, we can't live on our mom and dad's breakthroughs. We can't live on our grandparents' breakthroughs. Yes, they can carry us so far, but we can't underestimate the power of a personal breakthrough. 2 Samuel 5 says that the Philistines heard that David was anointed and they came for him. Now, this is what's crazy. This is not the first time that the Philistines showed up. They harassed the people of God under King Saul, but Saul was disobedient. The Philistines wore the Israelites out. But then after Saul died, we don't hear about the Philistines for eight years. But then David becomes king and the Philistines showed up. Why? Because the anointing upon David attracted an enemy. And we need to fix something in the body of Christ today. You're not attacked by the enemy because you're flawed. You're attacked by the enemy because you're favored. You're not being attacked by the enemy because you're flawed. You're being attacked by the enemy because you're favored. There was an anointing upon David's life and the Philistines saw it and they came for it. And so today, if the enemy is coming after you, it's not because you're flawed. It's because you're favored. And there's an anointing upon your life. But that same anointing that's upon your life that attracted that enemy is the same anointing that's going to take out the, uh, take out the enemy because it's anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing that's going to bombard the enemy. If the anointing upon you attracts the enemy, it will also take care of the enemy because no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. David had to have his own personal breakthrough. There was no attack by the Philistines. We didn't hear about them for eight years. David becomes king and the Philistines show up. The enemy is never going to quit, but he's always going to lose. 
The enemy is never going to quit, but he's always going to lose. The enemy may be trying to bombard you and attack your finances, but you need to use that God-given authority that he gave you and bombard the enemy with that in Jesus' name. David hadn't heard from the Philistines, but then they show up and they're at the valley of Rephaim. Rephi means giant. But when we add the suffix I am to the end, it makes it plural. We're at the valley of Rephaim, which is not a valley of giant. It's a valley of giants. We see that in 2 Samuel 5, 18. We talk about David having five stones. Why did he have five stones? Because Goliath had brothers. He was prepared to take the other brothers out. <laughs> He wasn't coming just after Goliath. He was ready to take the others out as well. David was prepared. David does something powerful. When we're now at the valley of Rephaim, David inquires of the Lord and says, Shall I go up against them? And God said, Yes, go up against them. And then David says, Will you give me victory? And God says, Yes. Here's a key. Before the fight, Find out from God, what's your strategy? How do you want me to fight? How do you want me to win this battle? I'm getting the wisdom from you, God. That's a key to your personal breakthrough. Inquire of the Lord and say, how do you want me to do this? God was giving him a strategy for his success. God will give you strategy for your success. How do you go into a battle? I mean, David's army was a lot smaller. You know, how is he saying, well, you know, God's got this. No, it's not pompous or pious or to say, well, God, you know, I've got this. This is, no, if God be for you, who can be against you? If God says, yes, this is a strategy I want you to use, then we can say the victory is mine in Jesus' name. That's not pride. That's humility saying, I know that when I go before the enemy, I'm going to win this battle because, God, you've given me the strategy to win this battle. God, you're on my side. I'm not going there by myself. You're with me in this battle. <laughs> if God be for me, who can be against me? When you look at the area of finances and maybe the enemy is attacking you and your finances, we can say, God, how do you want me to win? How do you want me to bombard the enemy? Give me the strategy, God. Then we can say, okay, you've got this, Lord, because you're with me in this battle. That's not arrogance. Religion has trained us that insecurity or humility, you know, insecurity is a sign of humility or insecurity is a sign of spiritual maturity. And that is not true. No. We don't need to be insecure because we can be secure in our position in Christ. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We've got the full armor of God on. We've got praying in the Holy Ghost. We've got the Lord on our side. We can know and be confident in Him knowing that He's going to help us. Hallelujah. David goes to the battle God delivers them into his hand and David renames the location of the battle because of the victory that God gave them. So it was the Valley of Giants, the Valley of Rephaim. But now David wants to rename it and he calls it Baal Perizim from the house of Perez. He could have said Baal Perez. But what happens when we add that suffix, I am on it? It's not Lord of the breakthrough. It's Lord of the breakthroughs. Why? Because we don't need just a breakthrough in our life. God is the God of breakthroughs. See, God doesn't promise us that we're just going to have one breakthrough and then it's over and we're done. No, we need breakthroughs. Why? Because we have many giants. No, we can go confidently in any battle knowing that God is with us. 
Woo, glory to God. Who, if God be for me, who can be against me? We can win every battle. We can have breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough because it's not Bel Perez, it's Bel Perizim. So David adequately and appropriately renamed that place from the Valley of Giants, the Valley of Rephaim to Bel per Perizim. It's not house or place of breakthrough. It's Lord of the breakthroughs. David not only prophesies not only his battle, but also his victory in every battle. Do you prophesy your victory in every battle? You need to. We all need to say, we're in this with you, Lord. You're with us. If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I've been made more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. God, you've got this in my business. God, you've got this in my finances. God, you've got this in investments. It doesn't matter that the gas prices have gone up. It doesn't matter if gas hits $10 a gallon. God, you said that you would provide all of my needs according to your riches and glory. You didn't say you would provide all my needs according to what the gas price is. You didn't say you would provide all my needs according to the U.S. economy. You didn't say you would supply all of my needs according to the stock market. No, God, we don't live on this level. Hallelujah. We are not just, we're not citizens here on earth. We're citizens in heaven. And if God be for me, who can be against me? If God said that he's going to provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory, then it doesn't matter what our income is. It doesn't matter what the gas prices go up to. It doesn't matter what the U.S. economy happens or if it crashes. God said that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. And if we have more than one battle, then we know that we're going to have more than one breakthrough because God is the God of breakthroughs. He is, it, this no longer is this place, the Valley of Rephaim, the Valley of Giants. No, we're living in a place called Baal Perizim, the Lord of the breakthroughs. It's not the Lord of breakthrough, it's Lord of breakthroughs because God expects us to have not just one battle, we're going to have many battles, but every battle that we're in, we know that we serve a God of the breakthrough. And that's exactly what we're going to have. We're going to have breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Because we don't get a culture of breakthroughs with one breakthrough. No, we get a culture of breakthroughs with breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Now, I've heard people say, how long am I going to keep having battle after battle? All your life. You, listen, we're in a battle. When you became born again and you have salvation in your life, we serve a God of breakthroughs. Yeah, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have battles because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But... God has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly, meaning nothing missing, nothing broken. We have more than enough. Hallelujah to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not diminish. Never are we supposed to back down in the day of battle. Never are we supposed to diminish in the area of finances. Never are we to, to diminish in any area of our lives. We see in this text that God delivers them into their hand and they came back next year. And David went back to God and asked, do you want me to go up? Do you want me to do what I did the last time? Listen, when you're in a battle, God's going to give you the victory over that battle. But when we get into another battle, we can't assume that we're going to win the battle the same way we won the last battle. Because God is a strategic God. And we need to inquire of him just as David did. David could have assumed, hey, the last strategy seemed to work. I'll use the same strategy. But that is not what God wanted. Every time your enemy shows up, God is wise not to use the same strategy. God says, circle around about him. And when you hear the sound of marching in 
the tops of the trees, then you go up. Now, I've never heard marching in the tops of the trees, but there's a sound. We need to listen for the sound that God is giving us, the victory, the breakthrough, because God wants us to have a breakthrough for every battle that we're in. When you hear the sound going into the top of the mulberry trees, there is a sound today that God is trying to sound the alarm. God is trying to give us strategy for every battle that we're in. Some of you are watching and hearing and listening right now, thinking how in the world am I gonna get out of this financial predicament? I'm in so much debt and the economy is just, it's plummeting. The amount of money that I'm making right now isn't stretching as far as it used to because of the gas prices and everything that's made out of petroleum is every Everything is going up. But God says, I'm a faithful God to you. I'm going to supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. You don't have to worry because I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Raise your hands right now and begin to praise God. Put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. God never meant for you to wallow in or uh, to worry. God said, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus we never have to worry he I, we've never seen the righteous forsaken or, or his seed begging for bread God provides for the spirits which are the least of the birds how much more will your heavenly father provide for you we need to begin to praise we need to begin to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. God is the one that puts the oomph in our try. As long as we begin to praise him, as long as we begin to ask him, what's your strategy for this victory, Lord? How do you want me to break through in the area of finances? How do you want me to break through in this business? How do you want me to break through in these investments? Lord, what, what are some wisdom tips that you want me to use today in this economy that we're in? And God is going to to give you the strategy. Hallelujah to God. I want to pray with you right now. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, every person that's watching and listening, we thank you, Lord, that you are the God of breakthroughs because we are descendants, Lord God, from Jesus Christ. We are descendants of David. We are descendants from the house of Perez. We thank you, Father God, that you promised us not just one breakthrough. You promised us breakthrough after breakthrough, after breakthrough. Now, Father, I thank you for your wisdom and I thank you, Lord, for victory in every battle. In Jesus' name, I want to hear from you. Join me again next week on Money Matters. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. For more information about Karen, or to get a copy of one of her books, make sure to visit her on the web at karenford.org. Join us next week for Money Matters with Karen Ford.